As cities become bigger and denser, is there still a way to infuse city life with a sense of freedom and an appreciation of nature? Meet architect and visionary Ma Young Song. Ma is the founder of Mad Architects, based in Beijing. His buildings span the globe, and his designs have redrawn city skylines. In 2006, Ma was awarded the Young Architects Award by the Architectural League of New York, and Fast Company magazine put him on their 2014 list of the 100 most creative people in business. He's the first Chinese architect to receive a fellowship from the Royal Institute of British Architects. Ma's aesthetic follows the concept of san shui, inspired by Chinese landscape paintings. For Ma, nature drives design, and architecture should strive to meet residents' emotional and spiritual needs. When you look at the world, you see a lot of uh, problems, and then at the same time, you want to propose a new possibility. That's the energy come from, I think. So the first time when I, when I designed, the first project was a fish tank, for example. Uh, because I saw this fish live in this uh, cubic fish tank uh, on the street and people selling the fish. If I were a fish, I don't want to live in that fish tank. Uh, what about architecture in the city? Maybe those buildings were not designed for human beings. We should uh, redesign those things. That was a very initial thinking. And then I designed a new fish tank for that fish. Some of Ma's well-known projects appear to have risen up from the natural landscape. His opera house in Wintry Harbin resembles a snowy mountain. In Anhui province, blocks of housing towers mimic the Hyong Shan mountain range. The Nanjing Zendai Himalaya Center covers half a million square meters with hill-shaped high-rises and public gardens flowing with waterfalls and creeks. Now as nature-inspired designs are coming to the United States. I met Ma at his studio in Los Angeles, California, where he's finishing his first U.S. project, a residential development called Garden House. So Ma, this is, this is the first here in the United States. So yes, talk to me about the concept and what you were hoping to achieve. Here is a multifamily apartment. I want to make like a community. So it's like a village, small village on top of a hill. Mm. So the bottom half of this building be covered by all the greens on the wall. So it looked like a hill landscape. And then we put a small house on top. Very and, nice. And there's a courtyard in the middle. I think courtyard is important for community. So everyone can, can see each other through the courtyard. I think the, the main challenge for the walkers is that everything it's unique, every part, every plan is unique. And the wall, the green wall on the, on the outside. Well, actually, my argument is we, we provide this green facade to the city. At the same time, we can lower the temperature inside the building. And we actually don't need the, uh, the facade material. We don't normally, you, know, you, you do paint, you do metal panels, now we don't have them. So instead we put a green. But then maintenance of the green is the issue. This has become a very large living wall. I heard that's the largest living wall in the oh, US. Wow. And they have to use very uh, special plants from desert, from local, and then the, uh, the, uh, the water system need to be very efficient to, to save water. And uh, the next phase, I guess, is getting the trees in, right? You see those uh, uh, concrete boxes? They're tree pots. Later on, they will put a tree in those pots, also on the roof. So from the street, urban street, you can see we have a trees on the, on the hill <laughs> uh, sur surrounding the, the small village. How do you think your upbringing in Beijing has influenced you as an architect? Beijing was a great city. I, I think it's uh, built like a huge garden. When I was a kid, I, I live in the traditional courtyard house. And there's a valley, Hutong, and then there's a mountains and lakes in the center of the city, right behind the Forbidden City. It's, uh, it's all, so, so people live in this um, uh, 
uh, nature. And after school, I go climb the, this small hill, and then I go swim. Um, I, I, I thought the city should look like that. The, the, you always has a metropolitan life, uh, also nature mixed. Only after I came to the States and after I study architecture, modern architecture, I find modern architecture is so different. Modern architecture think more about buildings, about objects, about the space. And then I re realized Beijing was a very um, unique. And, and then I find there is actually a philosophy behind that in Asian uh, China. The nature and the artificial can coexist. Human being and nature should combine together because human needs to have nature as a cultural reference. They, they imagine a lot of things through the nature, through the trees, the rock, the water, that's a spiritual quality of the life uh, in, in the city. Let's talk about architecture in general. Um, a, a noted architect uh, once said, architecture is a deep way of engaging with the world. I want to get your definition. How do, how do you see architecture? How would you describe it to someone? Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure architecture is about the, the whole world because you build the, the whole world by doing buildings. Um, but. I would say it's also designed by individuals. It's a, so I, I think it's a conversation in between the world and the one person. A little bit like art. Uh, you, this, you, your creation always reflects how you see the world, how you understand the people, the culture, um, what you want to imagine about the future. What's that first uh, <coughs> experience like where you've designed something and it's been embraced and people love it. It's a blockbuster as you described the opera house. What's the experience like going after it's been created um, and walking around and seeing people in awe and looking at your works? What's, what's that like for you? I like to be behind the scene. If I go there, I, 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 yeah, I want to observe people, how they behave, how they react, but I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> But one time, not, not about my building, I visited uh, Louis Kahn's building in San Diego, the Salk Institute. There's a beautiful plaza facing the ocean in the middle of the, the courtyard. And I saw uh, some, someone sit there and just look at the ocean for a while, and then she started to cry. I don't know what she think about uh, something, but the environment give, enhance her to become very emotional. I think that's uh, really touching me. Yeah, that's, that's reaction I want to see people, because it seems you create architecture as a stage that everyone can perform and they can have their life in this stage. When, when I look at my building and people go there and they start to laugh, they start to jump or <laughs> feel, express themselves, I feel uh, very satisfied. You mentioned you, you like to go and watch people react. You don't necessarily want to talk to them, but you like to see what their reactions are. Um, is there one that stands out in your mind where you've gone to one of your places and you've seen people reacting and interacting? I mean, probably not that experience where someone's crying, but one that stays with you. And, and, and how much of a payoff is that for you? I mean, obviously, you do a business to get rewards, but that's another form of a reward where watching that visceral reaction from someone, uh, is there a story or two that stand out for you? There's a, I can tell you two things in Beijing because Beijing is a very strange place that uh, everyone believes in something already. So it's, uh, when you propose any new things, new architecture, they will first question. For example, the, this Hutong Bubble project it's a, it's a renovation project. I, I built this a silver bubble, metal, uh, in the traditional courtyard. So when we construct the, the bubble, and the neighbor said, it's a French lady. He said, why are you doing this in this uh, traditional house? You don't understand your own culture. You, you know, this beautiful old house, you should, you should do the same. 
because our building is a, it's actually not a building, it's a space with a reflect material and uh, I want to reflect all the surrounding into this uh, volume. So, so I want the building to disappear into the environment. So after we build it, she came again, she said, oh, I, lo I love this. But another one, also in Beijing, is a big building. It's uh, called the uh, Chaoyang Park Plaza. It's a two black high-rise building. We, put it, we built it on the edge of the park. Still, a lot of people um, have a different reaction to the building. There's a one um, journalist, they go to the street and they interview other people who live in the building, who use the building, who pass by the building. They give all different kind of opinions. Some of them, they just say, this is too alien, too different from the surrounding. And some people say, oh, this is a, uh, so unique, so new, but that's, what, that's not what I want. I, I designed that building as a mountain, as a like, black ink painting mountain that you can find in the in old painting. There's just a couple guys that, oh, this remind me the, the old <laughs> traditional painting. But most people think this is so different, so new. So I, I think the, the past 20, 30 years urbanization, we built many new buildings, but uh, in the long history, that's a short. I think that's just one period. So after that, how the future Chinese city, future Chinese architecture should go, I, I really think we should create something new, but uh, linked to the, the, the past, the, the, the tradition, the philosophy that we had a uh, long time ago. So there's a, there's a gap in between. As someone who pushes the boundaries of what's expected, Ma's work is not always met with universal acceptance. Filmmaker and Star Wars director George Lucas chose Ma's design for his Lucas Museum of Narrative Art. The museum is expected to open in 2021 in Los Angeles. Originally, it was slated to be built in Chicago. The uh, Lucas Museum design described as a palace for Jabba the Hutt by a Chicago politician. Does that hurt when people criticize your work or do you think, no, I've, I've created a reaction. People are reacting to my uh, design. I like that design. I wouldn't uh, feel happy if people criticize it, but the way they criticize, I don't understand. You know, the world you just sa said, because I, I, I didn't watch Star Wars movie. <laughs> so I don't know what they're talking about. I think, what uh, the building, that design bring to Chicago was a, a new typology. Um, because Chicago is a modern architecture home, a lot of high rise buildings, but our building was on the edge of the city and uh, connect to the, ocean, uh, to the lake, to the waterfront. So actually we designed this building not as object, not a, as a building, it's a, almost like a landscape. It's a, 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 a volcano <laughs> melting into the, to, to the landscape. It's a very um, unusual way that people can walk around or, or approach the building or enter the building. It's, uh, I, I think that should be very unique and exciting experience for people, surreal. Like, it's like you walk on the moonscape. Right, if you walk on that uh, landscape. But they, they didn't like it. Some people didn't like it. I don't know. Some, every time I meet real people, they say it's exciting, they like it. Uh, but you still see the world on the internet, but it doesn't bother me. In 2016, the Chinese government issued a ban on so-called weird architecture. The government said architecture should be, quote, suitable, economic, green, and pleasing to the eye. President Xi Jinping uh, said that uh, architects needed to get away from weird architecture in, in China. And, and there was even a, a quote from Rosanna Hu in 2012. She said, uh, a lot of architects in the US are lost, but there are no projects. Here we are lost and we're building cities. Um, 
is that a fair criticism? And, and as, uh, as Chinese architecture changed over the last few years, I mean, is there an identity now uh, that's, that's truly Chinese architecture, would you say? I mean, how do you view these criticisms? I think the weird architecture is a good term. What is the weird? I mean, nobody can answer that clearly. Um, so you have opportunity to uh, explain what you think is weird. Um, at the very beginning, uh, I think China was building a lot of uh, cities and new architecture and very open to the new ideas. A lot of architects go there and people say this has become the very experimental place for architects. I think that's a good thing. I think right now, a lot of people try to guess what's a weird. They think weird equals new creation, which I think is wrong. But, but in this stage, a lot of people become more conservative, I would say, in China. Uh, not, there's still international architects go there, but they start to self-check before. <laughs> should, should I do this, should I do that? It's a, uh, it's a, what they create there is not necessarily new in the world anymore. And Chinese architects also, you know, there's a, seems there's a um, very strong uh, uh, demanding to look back to the history, to the cultural. I think that's important, that's, that's necessary, but the goal is to study those and creating something totally new, not repeating the past. It's interesting, this will be my final question. Um, and it's about the bubble. Uh, it, it reminded me earlier in our conversation when you were talking about the bridge and how the bridge reflected the mountain and, and, and the lake. And, and the bubble, in a sense, is, is the new version of the bridge, isn't it? I mean, and it's, oh, yeah. it, it's Oh, that's your interesting own, you talk about this. It's your own form of poetry, I guess. Yes. The bridge, you see the mountain and the reflection in the lake. And the la because the wave of the lake, the, the, the the reflection is not to duplicate the reality. That's what happened in our bubble, because the bubble the, has a strange shape. <laughs> so the re reflection inside it kind of twisted. So uh, for me, it's a, a little bit like uh, a dream, <laughs> like, like what you see in the dream. Nothing's clear, um, but, but the full of imagination. <laughs> Wow, what a delight. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.